The Life and Sad Ending of Joan Davis Josephine Joan Davis was born June 29, 1907, in St. Paul, Minnesota. She was the only child of Leroy Davis and Nina May Davis, who were married in St. Paul on November 23, 1910. Davis had been a performer since childhood. She appeared in vaudeville. Davis's first film was a short subject for educational pictures called Way Up There, 1935, featuring a then-unknown Roy Rogers. Educational's distribution company, 20th Century Fox, signed Davis for feature films. Tall and lanky with a comically flat speaking voice, she became known as one of the few female physical clowns of her time. Perhaps best known for her co-starring turn with Bud Abbott and Lou Costello in Hold That Ghost, 1941, she had a reputation for flawless physical comedy. Her pantomime sequence in Beautiful But Broke, 1944, was a slapstick construction site episode. She also featured in Tailspin, 1939, as a supporting actor for the Women's Bendix Air Race Circuit. She co-starred with Eddie Cantor in two features, Show Business, 1944, and If You Knew Susie, 1948. With a radio career, Joan Davis entered radio with an August 28, 1941 appearance on The Rudy Valley Show and became a regular on that show four months later. Davis then began a series of shows that estimated her as a top star of radio situation comedy throughout the 1940s. When Valley left for the Coast Guard in 1943, Davis and Jack Haley became the co-hosts of the show. With a title change to the Sealist Village store, Davis was the owner-operator of the store from July 8, 1943 to June 28, 1945, when she left to do Joni's Tea Room on CBS from September 3, 1945 to June 23, 1947. Sponsored by Lever Brothers on behalf of Swan Soap, the premise had Davis running a tea shop in the little community of Smallville. The tea shop setting continued in Joan Davis Time, a CBS Saturday night series from October 11, 1947 to July 3, 1948. With Lionel Stander as the tea shop manager, the cast also included Hans Conried, Mary Jane Croft, Andy Russell, the Corrielers Quintet, and John Rarig and his orchestra. Leave It to Joan ran from June 4th to August 22nd, 1949, as a summer replacement for the Lux Radio Theater, and continued from September 9th, 1949 to March 3rd, 1950. She was also heard on CBS from July 3rd to August 28th, 1950. She was a frequent and popular performer on Tallulah Bankhead's legendary radio variety show, The Big Show, 1950 to 1952. Davis was also a regular on Eddie Cantor's Time to Smile program. In her television career, Davis was the star of the unsold pilot Let's Join Joni, which was recorded in 1950. The proposed series was a television adaptation of Leave it to Joan. When I Love Lucy premiered in October 1951 on CBS television and became a top-rated TV series, Sponsored wanted more of the same. I Mary Joan premiered in 1952 on NBC, casting Davis as the manic wife of a mild-mannered community judge, Jim Bacos, who got her husband into wacky jams with or without the help of a younger sister, played by her real-life daughter, Beverly Wills. Davis was also one of the show's executive producers. I Mary Joan did not achieve the rating success enjoyed by I Love Lucy, but during its first two years, it received moderately successful ratings, even cracking the top 25 for the 1953-1954 season. However, by the start of its third year, not only were the ratings beginning to slip, but Davis began experiencing heart trouble. As a result, the series was canceled in the spring of 1955. I Married Joan experienced greater success in off-network syndication. It was one of the earliest series to take advantage of that avenue. In 1956, a year after I Married Joan had ended its primetime run, Davis was approached by ABC to star in The Joan Davis Show. The premise of this proposed series had Davis playing a musical comedy entertainer who had raised her daughter on her own. Davis used her real name as the lead character. With her personal life, in 1931 she married Cy Wills. They divorced in 1948. They had a daughter, Beverly Wills, an actress. 
Sadly, on May 22, 1961, Davis died of a heart attack at the age of 53 at her home in Palm Springs, California. She was interred in the Holy Cross Cemetery Mausoleum in Culver City, California. Joan Davis has two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, one for her contribution to the motion picture industry at 1501 Vine Street, and one for radio in the 1700 block of Vine.